so I want your thoughts on the dosing protocols, the different ester chains, and then the different forms of, of options that we have for TRT and what your thoughts are on those and experiences. Cool. Um, yeah, I love this topic. So Sustanon is an interesting medication because Sustanon is just a marketing ploy to be able to patent a product that went generic to be able to sell it for more because – when a when a pharmaceutical company makes a product, you have a, I think it's eight years or nine years that you can patent it, and then that's so that you can yep. sell it for whatever the fuck you want for to recoup research and development cost, aka make a fucking killing. And then right, so that will that they will write that into the standard of care, and they'll say, okay, well this is now the best solution because it's the one that makes us the most money. So Sustanon, I think is you know, and again I'm not in the cycle world but I imagine that sustenon would work better in super physiological doses because when it when the short acting esters are wearing off you're not crashing down to nothing but for the sake of TRT I think that sustenon's annoying because it comes in glass ampules and I think that one's better pinned if you're only using it in a replacement dose I think it's better pinned either three times a week or daily because of those short esters. I think it's just a pain in the ass. So yes. I don't use sustenon for TRT for anything. It's also more expensive in Australia as well which just makes no sense. Um, an anthate and cypionate to me are like Coke and Pepsi. They're interchangeable. They're, they're, they're both very good versions of cola. Um, so <laughs> I think that, that there are some molecular differences between an anthate and cypionate that may suggest why some people respond to one or another better, but that could also be placebo. Um, the half-life differs by a few hours. So I, I use them interchangeably. Um, and the, the, the general consensus that I've come to is that if there was a better option than stabbing ourselves, we all wouldn't be stabbing ourselves. So it's injectables right. is the best option that we have at the moment. Orals sound great. They're not strong enough and they don't work. Um, if they did, we'd all be using them. Um, exactly. Cream has a place, but it has to be compounded at 20% and be liposomal based and it has to be applied to the scrotum. Um, the advantage of the cream is that, and again, I'm not talking about like the, the Andrew Forte shit, that stuff you have to take a bath in, that stuff's crap. But like the 20% <laughs> cream, the advantage of that is that it will convert more preferentially to DHT. And guys who have got chronic issues like, you know, elevated prolactin that's not from a prolactinoma, so like idiopathic hyperprolactinemia, chronic stress, like uh, injuries that might be actually down-regulating 5-alpha reductase and leading to an increased metabolism to estrogen, a lot of the time, those guys will tolerate uh, cream better, and it can actually push down their cortisol and prolactin markers if the root cause of that can't be resolved. But the problem with the cream is it's less forgiving. If you if you skip a dose, you're going to be having a low testosterone day. Plus, you can't have a shower straight afterwards. It can transfer sexually. Um, I think the cream can be used once a day um, as opposed to twice a day, but that's something that I'm you know, looking into and speaking to a bunch of people about just to give guys options. But in general, it's injections. The Nibido, uh, Reandrin, uh, Undecanoate one, like you know, one shot every 12 to 16 weeks, that sounds great. Like three yeah. shots a year, fuck yeah, it doesn't work. No. Um, because no. the, half, the half-life's way shorter than uh, the window that it's administered in. Plus the ester's too heavy, so most guys end up working out to get about like 70 milligrams a week. Yep. Um, yep. And it's just crap. But I think that when that goes generic, there could be that might be a good option as like a once a week shot as an alternative for cypionate and anathate in the future, theoretically, maybe. Yeah. But at this stage, anathate cypionate's the tried and true, it's the gold standard. And that's like and I think, yeah, you're completely right. Like Twice a week, I think, is the sweet spot for most people in terms of like the least amount you can stab yourself to get the most stability. Yeah. Um, some guys do better with three times a week. I would argue, and you could probably, you'll probably be in the same boat as this, that when you, when you're first on TRT, I think you're more influenced by the peaks and the troughs than when you've been on it for a while. Yeah. When your baseline state is optimal testosterone levels, those peaks and troughs don't impact you as much. But when you're starting out, like some guys do much better with three times a week than twice because they are quite sensitive to those peaks and valleys. But over time, I think for most people in terms of the sake of compliance and if you're busy and you've got stuff going on, I think twice a week is the sweet spot. Yeah. And it's kind of like the difference between like doing it once a week is like having like a massive cup of coffee, coffee first thing in the morning and doing it twice a week is like having a cup of coffee in the morning and a cup of coffee again at like 11 or 12 in the afternoon. Right. Or, or late morning, whatever. Um same amount of caffeine, same amount of coffee, but you're just splitting it up a bit more because you're understanding the half-life and the peaks of the troughs. Um, 
you know, daily injections are, are probably the most mechanistically ideal because they would mimic natural production the most closely, but sure. it, it gets old. Um, subcutaneous injections sound good on paper, but for a lot of guys, they, it doesn't work for them. If you put it in MCT oil, like a thinner oil with less viscosity, more guys will get success with subcutaneous injections, but a lot of guys don't. And I'm not sure about putting oil into subcutaneous tissue, to be honest, because it has to drain via the lymphatic system. I don't think that that's a good idea. So I think that it should be put into the muscle. I prefer to put testosterone compounded in MCT oil because it's thinner, so it draws and injects faster. So you can generally use a smaller syringe, which over time, like people, like you get sick of stabbing yourself. When the novelty wears off, you're like, fuck man. Like, huh. so, you know, I like to, I like to use a 29 gauge half inch insulin syringe into the delt. Um, my personal TRT dose, I take 250 a week. Um, that's what works well for me. And that's half a mil in each delt, you know, half a mil on Monday, half a mil on Thursday. Sometimes I'll do ventro glute if, if I can be bothered, but generally I just whack it into the delt. And that's what works for the majority of guys. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a fan of the subcutaneous whatsoever. Never have been. I, I, now I am interested because I've always just done intermuscular. Always. I do a 25 and I, I fucking, I am not a fan of pinning, especially after this long. And so I'm going to have to talk to you later about maybe switching to the insulin syringe. We'll talk about it some other time. So I don't do this on here for my own personal, but I'm interested in that. I want to talk to you about that. Um, a little bit later. I, I'm going to throw this in at you just for your entertainment and for people out there about Sustanon. I, I mean, literally, I had to do videos on Sustanon. So here's a funny one. When I moved to Maui, this was in 2012. And that's kind of when I started doing videos. And, and you know, some people recognized right away. But I would overhear and they would call it the Sust. Are you on the Sust? And they were acting like it was some spectacular form of testosterone that was somehow better or gave you bigger results than other forms of it's like somebody taking trend hex and thinking it's going to give you a better result than trend ace it's still trend just like this is still test so sustenon is not any more superior than any other form it's just a fucking mix of 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 ester chains where maybe you'll feel it a little bit quicker but you're also more at risk of post-injection pain, having shorter esters in there mixed in. I'm not a fan of it at all. I don't fucking touch it. I, I don't find anything special about it. I don't find anything more beneficial about it than anything else. It's just like you said. It's like a, almost like a marketing trick or uh, it, it's just bullshit nonsense. And I know it was probably designed for TRT or that was the thought or whatever behind it. But I don't also don't care for it for TRT either, like you were talking about. I'm a boring ass give me Scipionate and that's all I want, you know, and that's how I've always been. So, and do you ever find people using propionate for TRT? Because I do, I just, I hate pinning so much that I can't do it, but do you run into that at all? I think that propionate and sustenone by extension can often be more dopaminergic for guys because you get that peak of free testosterone. And I think that's why guys like it more. Um, but when it comes to propionate, like I, I think that propionate really does require daily shots. I mean, yeah, you can yep. get away with it every other day, but like, why not just do cipionate every other day? Um, if you're going to do it that way, but because propionate is generally like a hundred milligram per mil, I mean, you're, you're pinning more than double the amount of oil and you're not getting yep. the thing I like about stipionate and menanthate and, and you'd be the same when you've been on it for a while is that if you're doing twice a week shots and you're traveling or, you know, you've got stuff going on or, or like all that kind of stuff, like. It's nice to be able to just like, you know, if you're doing Monday, Thursday and something comes up, you can do your shot on Friday or you can yes. do your shot early on Sunday. And it's, you're, you're really just spacing out the peak over the course of the week. Whereas when, when you start using things like propionate, you become a lot more tethered to your protocol. Yep. And when, you know, if it's something like putting a bit of cream on every day, okay, well, that, that's a lot more chill. But if you're now becoming reliant on doing a jab every day, otherwise you're going to experience negative symptoms. I mean, I just don't think the juice is worth the squeeze. I agree. 100%. Totally agree. 